Today we're going to look at a really cool family of integrals and a lot of really nice results come out of this family. So in particular, we're going to find the closed form for the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x over x to the a plus 1. Now you might say, well, where does this converge? Well, I'll leave it as an exercise to show that this converges if the real part of a is bigger than 1. And just as a hint for how this goes, if a is a real number which is larger than 1, then, well, you can start with this inequality. So our integral is less than the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x over x to the a. But then you can use an integration by parts technique to break this into two pieces that definitely converges. And so we're bounding this maybe like above by something that converges. And you might say, well, we're bounding it below by what? Well, I think you can bound it below by something um, that's pretty easy to calculate as well. Again, that'll be part of the exercise. Okay, so let's dive into, well, the integral in question. So we're gonna start by splitting this into two pieces. So it'll be the integral from zero to one of, well, the integrand, so natural log of x over x to the a plus one, plus the integral from one to infinity. So now where are we gonna go from here? Well, from here we're gonna do a pretty standard trick of changing the variable in the second integral to turn it into something that's pretty similar to the first integral. And what we want to do is compress this interval from 1 to infinity back to the interval from 0 to 1 so that we can push these together. So let's see, what substitution makes that happen? Well, if we set x equal to 1 over t, you'll see that everything works out. That means that dx will be equal to negative dt over t squared. And now as x approaches positive infinity, you'll see that t approaches 0 from above. And then if x is equal to 1, you'll see that t is also equal to 1. So all of those parts tell us not only how to change the variables within our integral, but also the bounds of integration. So let's see what we've got. I'll copy over this first integral. So 0 to 1 of natural log of x over x to the a plus 1 dx. And then after that, we'll have, well, this plus will turn into a minus because of this. So it'll be minus the integral from 1 to 0 of, now we've got the natural log of x over, so it'll be t to the minus a plus 1 times dt over t squared. Okay, great. But now from here what we'll do is a couple of things. Well, actually I forgot to rewrite this natural log of x as the natural log of 1 over t. But in fact, I can take that natural log of 1 over t and turn it to the natural log of t if I change this minus sign to a plus sign. But I'm not going to change that minus sign to a plus sign. I'm going to take that and use it to switch the bounds of integration back to 0 to 1. So in fact, what we did is we picked up three minus signs along the way here, meaning an overall minus sign. But now from here, what we'll do is, well, maybe clear the denominator back so that we have a t to the a. And if we do that, well, what is this thing going to look like? Well, let's just write the integrand here, and you'll see that we have t to the a minus 2 times the natural log of t over t to the a plus 1. But now I'll change my um, variable of integration from t back to x and push these two integrals together. So now that's going to give me our integral from 0 to 1 of, it'll look something like this. We'll have 1 minus x to the a minus 2 over 1 plus x to the a 
all times the natural log of x dx. Okay, great. But from here, what we'll do is expand these as geometric series, or maybe expand this one over x to the a as a geometric series. So that's gonna give us something like this. We'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n, and then we'll have the integral from zero to one of, we'll have one minus x to the a minus two times x to the n times a times the natural log of x dx. And that's just using the standard rule for a geometric series expansion. Now from here, I'm gonna break this into two integrals within the sum. So I've got our sum as n goes from zero to infinity, our minus one to the n, and then inside of that, what do we have? Well, we'll have our integral from zero up to one of x to the n times a times the natural log of x dx, and then minus the integral from zero to one of, it's gonna be x to the n times a plus a minus two times natural log of x dx. So we've got something like that. But from here, we're gonna use a fairly well-known integral identity, which is the following. So we'll have the integral from zero to one of x to the m times the natural log of x is in fact equal to minus one over m plus one quantity squared. And so that's for only certain values of m. I think you need the real part of m to be bigger than negative one. But observe that these uh, exponents here are always, well, their real parts are always bigger than negative one, just based off of our condition up here that the real part of a is bigger than one. So what we'll do is we'll take each of these integrals and apply that formula that's inside of the magenta box. So this is gonna be a minus one over in a plus one quantity squared. And then here we'll have minus, and then we'll have another minus one over in a plus a minus one squared. Now, of course, those two minus signs will cancel and give us a plus. Okay, so from here what I'll do, well, let's maybe break this sum into two sums, which we can do because both converge, again, by our condition over here, and then we'll see where we can take it from there. Okay, so this is where we've ended up so far. So like I said before, I split those two sums into two pieces. Now, what we'll do from here is do an index change on the first sum to make it look more like the second sum. So in this case, we'll take all of the n's and replace them with minus n minus one. Now, a per now notice that that's gonna change our bounds of summation here. So in fact, this lower bound of summation will change to minus one because we'll see here that minus n minus one equal to zero means that n is equal to minus one. And then, well, the upper bound of integration will change to minus infinity. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So now we'll have the sum as n goes from minus infinity up to minus one. And now we'll have minus one to the n plus one, just using the fact that minus one to the minus n minus one is the same thing as minus one to the n plus one. I think that's pretty clear. And then here, what will we have? We'll notice n plus one now will be equal to minus n. So in fact, we'll have minus a times n minus one, but I can factor the minus one out and square it, and we'll see that we have n times a plus one squared, which is really nice because that's essentially the same thing as we have right here, because if we bring this minus sign in, we'll see that we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over n times a plus one squared. Okay, so, but now observe that we're summing the same type of object over all integers in the end. 
This takes up all the negative integers, and that second sum takes up all of the non-negative integers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this second half here, and I'm going to change this instead of a sum from minus infinity to minus 1. I'll just say that this is a sum over all integers. So in other words, from minus infinity to infinity. And then next up, I'm going to split this into even parts and odd parts. And I'm going to do that so that, uh, well, this minus sign or this alternating bit will kind of go away. So notice all over the odd numbers, we'll pick up a plus 1. And that's because, well, we'll have an odd number plus 1, which is even. And for the even numbers, we'll likewise have a minus 1. So that's going to give us the sum over n in integers. So these are going to be all the odd ones. So we'll have 1 over. And so now we'll replace n with 2n plus 1. So that'll give us, what, 2n plus 1 times a plus 1, and then all squared. Great. And then we'll have the same kind of thing, but just picking up a minus sign attached to the even integer. So in other words, the integers of, of the form 2n. So we'll have minus, and then we'll have the sum as n goes, or sorry, as n ranges over all integers of 1 over 2na plus 1 quantity squared. But now, in fact, these may seem super intimidating, but we've actually found closed forms for this type of sum on the channel before. And so we'll just jump right to the closed form of each of these. So what we end up with is pi squared over 4 times a squared, and then times the secant squared of pi over 2 times a, and then minus the cosecant squared of pi over 2 times a. So, well, like I said, we've done those on the channel before. Maybe, like, see if you can find them and post in the comments if you find the appropriate video. Okay, so I think that's a pretty cool closed form in itself. But now let's look at some nice, like, special cases of this. So as a summary, here is the result that we have just built. So if the real part of a is bigger than 1, then the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x over x to the a plus 1 dx is equal to pi squared over 4a squared, secant squared of pi over 2a minus cosecant squared of pi over 2a. And then just as a couple of special cases, notice the a equals 2 case gives us a value of 0. But in fact, this integral is much easier to calculate on its own. And then the a equals 3 case gives us this nice minus 2 over 27 pi squared. This integral is actually due to Hardy. Um, and then in the a equals 4 case, you get this minus pi squared over 8 square root of 2. Then the a equals 5 case, you get this minus 4 pi squared over 25 times 2 plus root 5 over 5 plus root 5. Now, of course, for most other values of a, you won't get these nice closed forms. Everything will be in terms of secant and cosecant. But if you choose a carefully, you can get these nice closed forms in terms of radicals. And that's a good place to stop.